I know you understand my special circumstance, God. Like, you know I don't want to do it, but I, you know, excuse me when I have to do it. And we negotiate with God, even on this side. God, I'm going to church and I'm doing really good. And God says, yes, you are. I love that. And I'm even giving all my money. I give all that. Yes, that's awesome, son. You've been doing great. And there's this one thing, and God is pointing out. And you say, whoa, 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 whoa. You said I was doing good. Yeah, you're doing awesome, but this girlfriend of yours. I know, I know, I know. I know she doesn't believe in you, and I mean, she's not really good. She's kind of destructive for me. She doesn't want me to be involved in church, and she's arguing with me all the time. But I guess my influence on her can really help. No, listen. Pardon me when I bow. We say stuff like that. Listen, we, we say, well, I have one weakness in my life. Come on, I, this is one my only weakness in my life. Of course God's understanding. I mean, he created me this way, didn't he? Sometimes I just need to be drunk to relax. That's just what I need to do. Okay. All right, part of, part of me, you get it, God. Listen, I'm not trying to condemn anyone, but I'm trying to, to expose the excuses we have sometimes in our lives. You know what, I, made a, I took a personality test and my personality profile said that I don't really like people. So this church thing, to be involved with other people and, and said, no, that's not for me. And God made me this way. This is not who I am. And God knows it. He made, he made it. You know, what's wrong with smoking pot? It's nature. God created nature. What can be wrong? It's nothing artificial in it. Why would it be wrong? It's the nature. Listen, tiger or nature too. And I don't have one in my living room because it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Just saying. That's a very bad argument. Rattlesnakes. Try to smoke that. <laughs> this is how God made me. Of course he understands. No, listen. God is not in the business of renovating you. He's not trying to fix you as good as possible. He's not trying to renovate. He's transforming you. You're not a fixer-upper. You are a new creation. And when I was a kid, listen now, I hated, I, I hated when I had toothache. I hated. And I know when every time I had toothache, my mom would help me if I asked her. But I always waited to ask her every time. Usually till I could not fall asleep late at night and I have to go and ask her. Because I know when I ask her, she will give me what I need and what I want. And then some more. The next morning she would take me to the dentist. So listen now. I could not get what I wanted without getting some more. I wanted immediate relief of pain and be able to sleep and forget about it. But I could not get that without getting my teeth permanently fixed. Because it was a deeper problem. And when I went to the dentist, listen, I gave them my finger to grab the whole hand. They did more. They, it was painful when they fixed my teeth, you know. And, and it was like digging deep and, and taking care of it. And finally it was fixed. And they told me, listen, son, we found seven more cavities in your mouth. And I didn't even know about it. Like they're digging around and finding problems that I was unaware of. And they said, let's take care of that too before it becomes a bigger problem. I'm like, what? So I could not get what I wanted without getting much more. Listen, now sometimes we treat God the same way. We go to him and we ask him, can you take care of this sin of my life? Can you, can you just give me a miracle? If you give me a miracle here, I'm going to worship you even more. But listen, Jesus is not a dentist, but he's not interested in just having one or two areas of your life. Well, he can get the spiritual side, and then I need to live my life over here. No, that's not how it works. 